I have made two different graphics engines before, and you guys seem to like it. So today I am doing it again, but instead I will be making it in Scratch. Scratch is like a beginner platform for literal children to learn programming and game design. But today I will see if I can recreate an actual graphics engine inside of it. Which will be interesting, and actually really difficult, since the platform is intended for making really simple games. So the first step of making a graphics engine is obviously render things onto the screen. Now by default Scratch has this implemented in. I mean, I can create a sprite and drag it onto the scene and it works. But that's cheating, so instead I will attempt to make my own renderer inside of Scratch. So, I found out that the only way to technically render things onto the screen is using the pencil. It's typically meant to be used for things like drawing projects, but theoretically we can use this to draw pixels onto the screen. Which, honestly, is the closest we're going to get to actual rendering in Scratch. Now the first thing I decided to render was 2D shapes. I started off with a simple square, which is just four lines. And I even created a circle, which required me to move one step and rotate one degree. Now, in my actual graphics engine, these shapes were filled, so I needed to do that here too. This honestly was super fucking infuriating. Um, in the end, it was simple enough, but Scratch just didn't want to cooperate the entire time I did this. But look guys, it's pretty! I made it rainbow coloured. Stage 2 of this graphics engine is 3D shapes, which is going to be even more of an ache to implement, since Scratch is literally a 2D platform. So previously for a square, I needed to create 4 points, and then basically join them together. We can use the same method for a cube, but instead we double the points to get 8. So the way this works is I created separate objects for each point. I then, in an infinite loop, used the pen to draw a line from each point, eventually resulting in a cube. The cool thing about this is because it's in an infinite loop, we can move the points around and create our own shapes. Is this 3D? Well, no, not really, but it's the closest thing we're going to get. I used the same method to create a prism too. Also, for some reason, this works like the first two times and then breaks. But I really cannot be bothered fixing that right now, and who cares? The next important part of any graphics engine is textures. Now again, this is something that technically natively exists in Scratch, since you can use costumes to create different versions of your sprite. But since we are not using sprites, we need to think of a different way of implementing it. And thanks to this messy long ass code, we can technically draw any texture onto the screen. Like this Minecraft diamond ore. I know it looks a little cursed, I'll get into that in a moment. Here's how this actually works. I'm still using the pen to draw the shape, in this case a square. But instead I change its colour for each pixel. To get the colours I want, I input numerical values into a custom list. We then use these values to adjust the pen's colour, saturation and brightness. We can also adjust the resolution of the image. Currently, I am making it 10x10, 10 10, which is why it looks a little bit cursed. We can easily increase the resolution though, and get a much nicer look. It does mean that I have to painstakingly make the list longer though, hence why I'm more keen on using the 10x10 10 10 resolution. And well, we can now technically create any textures we want. Here's a TNT texture at a higher resolution. I know it technically doesn't say TNT, but it's like the best I could do. And also, here are a few cool pattern ones. Now, Scratch is great for kids and basic games, but if you want a more serious and capable video game engine that's also set up for beginners, I recommend today's sponsor, Game Maker. Okay, so I'm going to try and create a game in Game Maker in just one minute while I talk to you about it. Game Maker is a friendly game engine for both beginner and advanced users. It can be used to make cross-platform games for desktop, Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo and more. Alright, let's make a, a minion. It has been used to make successful games such as Undertale, Hotline Miami and Hyper Light Drifter. Game Maker also has no level of entry, meaning that anyone can get started making games. Okay, looking cursed just like I want it. Something I really like is that everything you need to make games is right in the engine. You won't ever need any third-party software. This includes having the ability to create sprites, make animations and edit scripts, all within Game Maker. Okay, so let's make the minion follow my mouse. You don't even have to write a line of code if you don't want to, as Game Maker lets you also make logic with drag and drop. I decided to give him a hat. 
And if you ever get stuck, then don't worry, because GameMaker has a ton of tutorials, videos and other resources waiting to rescue you from any tricky situation. Plus, there is a massive community behind GameMaker that can be found on their forum, Discord and even subreddit, where you can chat with other fellow GameMaker users. Okay, so the one minute is over and, well, we have a minion following my mouse. You can try GameMaker for free right now by clicking the link in the description below. Now let's continue. Okay, everyone knows that any graphics engine needs some gorgeous, beautiful lighting. Unfortunately, this is Scratch, so we're not going to get that. But we can try. So there are no actual lightning nodes in Scratch, so we are going to have to fake it. Here's what I'm thinking. We can create a grid of squares in the scene. Then simply have the brightness level of said square change based on how far away it's from an object. So the closest squares will be bright and the ones further away will be darker. We can also apply some circular mass to this so that it looks a little bit nicer. Now, I don't actually know if this works, so let me test it out. Okay, um, it works? I made the light follow my mouse by the way, and we can change the range of the light too. So technically we have dynamic lighting now, and I'm not gonna lie, it's kinda sick. Oh, quick note, I tried making the resolution bigger, but Scratch only allows up to 300 clones, so this is the best we can do. Next up, we can also add shadows. Okay, so using the exact method as the lighting, but essentially inverting it, we can create shadows. So now my mouse here, for instance, has a shadow around it. We can apply the same effect to other objects to get the following shadows on them. Okay, the next feature that I needed to add was shaders, which, guess what, again, is not natively supported in Scratch. Now, I'm going to be honest, since shaders aren't a thing here, I was really questioning what counts as a shader. I could have easily created a sprite and given it a glow, but that's using sprites and not shaders. So instead, I wanted to see what cool effects I could create by just using the pen tool. Starting off with this distortion shader. We have this cool rainbow pattern, and wherever my mouse goes, a distortion occurs. This shader works by infinitely pointing the sprite towards the mouse, then changing the pen colour based on the X position added to the Y position minus the direction. We are also randomly altering the X and Y position. Changing the pen size also gives us different levels of detail. I created another shader, which is just the spiral that changes again based on the mouse movement. But to be honest, I'm not even sure this class is as a shader. So that's that, the engine is finished. Or at least, I don't want to work on it anymore. <laughs> also, out of curiosity, for the first time in this entire week, I actually checked out some other projects made by people on Scratch. And let's just say that they genuinely blew my mind. But I still kind of like my little rusty attempt, considering that I haven't touched Scratch since I was about 13. It's not too bad. Anyways, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching and subscribe, because that would be cool. Also, many thanks to Game Maker for sponsoring this video. If you want to start making games today for free, check out the download link in the description below. Bye!